Hi, you guys. It's Miss Neil from Chandler Athenaeum. And we all know it's coming, right? What's coming? Heat. Heat. You guessed it. More heat. But luckily, we know how to keep ourselves cool. We find things that we like. Personally, I love going to the lake to cool off. I love going swimming and using my paddleboard. It's kind of like a surfboard, but you can stand on top of it. You have an oar and you just paddle yourself through the lake and you can go small places and explore fun places. It's really fun if you haven't tried it. But I would love to know what you guys like to do during the summertime. Put them down in the comments below so I can read them later. For most of our history, air conditioners, electric fans, and other things that we rely on to keep us cool now weren't an option back then. So how did people cool off for thousands of years before these wonderful inventions? Taking a swim in a cool lake, river, or stream would be a great way to cool off if it was available. And the shade of a towering oak tree could also help. Perhaps you noticed how I cooled myself off at the beginning of our lesson. What did I do with my hands? Ah, I did what most people have done for centuries. I just fanned myself. I use my hands, but most often, people created devices to get the job done more effectively, like this. Handheld fans are thought to date back to Egypt over 4,000 years ago. The first fans could not fold and they were used to keep cool by blocking the sun and moving air around. They were usually just fixed objects held and carried on a long pole. They were made from silk, feathers, paper, and bamboo. Perhaps you've seen images and artwork of royal Egyptians being followed around by fan bearers, whose only job it was was to keep the nobles cool. Because fans were often a sign of power and wealth, it's not surprising that King Tut's tomb had several fans. Some were made with ebony with ostrich feathers. Those ostrich feathers look so huge and so fluffy. I love that one. Another one has a handle of gold and was covered in precious jewels and gemstones. These fans were beautiful. The next ones are folding fans. We're more familiar with these ones. And the accordion style fans became popular in the seventh century. The Japanese modeled their fans to mimic the wings of bats, and in China, everyone from empresses to peasants used their folding fans in their daily lives. And like many things that begin as useful everyday objects, these fans became fine quality pieces of artwork covered in paper or silk with beautiful calligraphy, artwork, and embroidery. I'd love to show you how to make your own beautiful fan to get ready for the hot summer months ahead of us and to share something beautiful with you today. All you're going to need is paper, glue, and something to color with, as well as popsicle sticks. But if you don't have any popsicle sticks, that's okay. You can still make the craft. Try using pencils, straws, chopsticks, or even pieces of cardboard instead. You're really creative. I know you can find something that will work just as well. For those pieces of paper, you can have it big, small, Really, it all depends on how big you want your fan to be. This one, I did eight and a half inches by eight and a half inches. So just a big old square. But it's really important that we know that a square has four equal sides. As long as it's four equal sides, it will work. So the first thing that you're going to want is your pieces of paper. It's really important that you guys get a square piece of paper, and we all know square is four equal sides. It can be big, it can be small, it's really up to you depending on how big or small you want your fan to be. It's really important in this step, if you want it to have a design, that you go ahead and draw the designs on those pieces of paper. Once we start folding and gluing, it's going to become really, really hard to get this step done. So if you would like to design it, you can pause the video now and then finish and then you can play it and then we'll continue on. But I'm going to continue on and I'm going to show you the next step after you finish your design. You're going to get your first piece of paper and you're going to accordion fold it. That means you go back, forward, back, 
forward, back, forward, back, and forward. Try to keep the folds equal, you guys. It will be really hard to make a nice, even fan if they are not, but that's okay if they are not. And then after you get that step, you're going to want to fold it in half. So it looks just like this. You're gonna do that for the next three pieces of paper. This is one of my examples. And then I'm gonna go on to another one of my examples, which has all of my papers already accordion folded and folded in half. So let me grab that real quick while you guys are focusing on accordion folding your own pieces of paper. All right. Again, if you need more time, just pause the video. If you have all your pieces of paper accordion folded and they look like this, awesome. Your next step is to get that glue. You're going to get one piece of paper and you're going to put the glue on the inside like that so the piece comes together as one. So I'm gonna put my glue down. Put enough pressure on it so I know that it will stay. And then set it aside so it can dry. You're gonna do that for the next three pieces. After you have this step done, we're gonna glue all four of them together. So you really want to make sure that you, if you have a certain design in mind, that you put them in the order that you want them to. I really want mine to be red, blue, green, and then purple. We're going to basically do the same thing that we did last time. Put glue on the edge. Grab your second one. Make sure they're facing the correct way. Just push it down and give it enough pressure that the glue spreads evenly everywhere. Go on to your next side, put glue down there. There we go. And then the last one. After you have all four pieces glued together, it should look something like this. Now, the glue isn't dry, so please allow time for this to dry. You really don't want to ruin your artwork. You can pause this video and allow it to dry, or you can continue to watch it and then you may finish the project when you're done. Luckily, I have one that is already dried and ready to go. So I'm going to put this off to the side and I will show you guys the final step. So after everything has dried, it should look something like this. This one I really took my time on and I did some really cool designs with squiggly lines, a checkerboard, some bubbles, and then some arrows as well. After this is dried and well to go, you're going to grab those popsicle sticks, straws, cardboard, really anything that you found, and we need to put them on top of the fan so they can open up. I would put only a little amount of glue on those popsicle sticks because if you put too much, then you'll glue your fan together. Put small amount of glue on the popsicle stick and you're gonna want it to be facing outwards. Again, you're gonna want this to dry because you don't wanna ruin your project. And then you should be able to close it like this. And then once it's dry, I'm gonna hold it so it doesn't break. Open it like that. I really hope you guys enjoyed that lesson as much as I did. I hope you are all doing so well and I miss you so much. Have a great day, bye. <laughs>